because she's going to think we forgot about her. You and I want to go on a rant about how amazing mom is because because if we go another podcast without talking about mom, <laughs> this that, yeah. would be, that would be an atrocity. Yeah. I'm actually going to edit this at the beginning of the, the show. <laughs> So this is going to be like, it, it'll roll us into the episode. She has to you deal got, with like this the, thing right now, the in like California. And she's been having to drive to California and back like in the same day, multiple times. What? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, like I it's, swear, mom it, doesn't tell me anything, man. Well, well, it's because she doesn't want you worrying. You know, you got a lot to worry about, but yeah, no, mom's been putting in a lot of work you know how special mom is yeah i know dude she's a, she's a beast she's a superhero i don't know how she does it she, she quite possibly will never stop happened. working i was asking dad the other day I, I was like dad like you know what what would make it possible for mom to like stop working and then dad dead ass looked at me and said she's never gonna stop working <laughs> like what do you mean no. she loves working she's a she's a hustler dude that's where she we get it from blue collar we get it from we sure. get a nice little a nice little blend between crazy Cuban and very hard worker. And it, it makes <laughs> and it makes a good mix. All right, Junior, let's get into this episode of uh, uh, Pit and Pull. Yeah! Here we go! Welcome, everybody, to the Pin and Pool podcast. This is obviously not gridiron junkies like what you see on my shirt. This is a complete rebrand done the right way with my brother. Uh, a lot of people have been wondering, like, hey, what's going on with gridiron junkies? They may have been following on my IG, seeing that the studio that I once was working at and doing all these shows is now no more. Uh, eventually, Five years down the road, we're going to come out with a documentary um, that uh, outlines how fucking crazy cool and how fucked up the place that I worked at was. Um, but no bad blood. I still am in contact with John Orlando. He wants the best for me. I want the best for him. And we keep it pushing. This is what is the best for everybody in the situation. And now that is all I've been doing for the past three months. Let's get into the person that a lot of the people are going to tune in for here. Uh, Junior, this is our first podcast together, dude. Let the people know what you've been up to. Well, I wouldn't say first podcast together. I mean, we've we've cooked up in the stew a few times already before. But uh, what I've been up to, man, is not much football as always. Went down to California, got to see some of my former offensive linemen from San Jose. One of them got married. Jesse Chamberlain, congratulations. And to your wife, Miss Chamberlain, congrats to you guys. Super happy for you guys. It was an awesome wedding. It's great to see all the guys again. Haven't seen them since about six months, it was. So it's honestly not that long, but it felt a lot longer. And then I took a trip down to Dallas about a month ago for the offensive line masterminds. Great experience. Got to learn from Lane Johnson. Uh Slater from the Chargers, just a bunch of just amazing people. Ar Armstead, I think, is the dude's name. He, uh, Teron plays, Armstead? Yeah. Yep. Dude's an absolute unit. But there was a bunch of legends there and uh, just a bunch of knowledge. So it was a great time, great experience. And I got to go with my uh, left guard, Patrick Kuna. So it was a really good time. Yeah, dude. No, I always, I always am envious of you whenever you get to go see the best of the best in the game. Because I'm like, man, motherfucker, I, I just, I just wasn't good enough. That's just the bottom line. It is, you know, the the first uh, like real NFL player that actually gave me the time of day was uh, Sean Merriman. And uh, go check out that episode because it actually was a good episode. Um, and he won Defensive Rookie of the Year. So. <laughs> I'm, right. I'm hanging around legends <laughs> too. It just took me a little bit longer. Um, anyways, Junior, we have been talking about doing a podcast together for a long time. The Pin and Pull podcast was almost Red Zone Ragers. Was that the right move that we both agreed that that was okay? Because to me, and when I say it now, it sounds horrible. Yeah, I think it was one of those things where we kind of got on the phone call. 
and we were like, uh-huh. all right, like let's just hop on the Xbox. Like we could think about this another time. Ideas were not just flowing in the time. It just it was just a dull moment. It was not good. It was a dull moment. I told dad the name. He was he was like, you know, you should probably have something that says brothers in there. You could you have the you, something brothers. So even when I told him, I was like, dad, we changed the name. It's not going to be Red Zone Ragers. It's going to be Pin and Pool, which we're going to get into in a second. But he was like, he was like, do you want to make it uh, Pin and Pool Brothers? It's like, no, no, I actually, I, I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Oh. Um, so yeah, he, he was in agreement with us though, that the name needed a change. And then I'm literally sitting at my computer, just fucking, I have a very creative job having to make clips and edit all the time. And I'm like, it came to me, pin and pull, pin and pull. Yes. Did the Google, nobody's gotten pin and pull. And, uh, Junior, why don't you explain to the people that, uh, are watching possibly our friends that have never played football. What is, what is pin and pull? Pin and pull is a run scheme where uh, the tight end usually comes down on the defensive end and the tackle pulls around, hence the pin and the pull. And uh, this is one of my favorite plays because, you know, your boy gets to uh, show his athleticism, show him what he can do out in the field. So, uh, you know, it kind of is fitting the way this all plays out. And I once was a tight end. So I oh. definitely, Actually, I, I, I was like, think about that. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's I know it's fun. I know you think of me as a linebacker, but, uh, I had four touchdowns my senior year of high school. Okay. Go Google my name. My huddle highlight tape shows up. One of the things I'm most <laughs> proud of is like, when you Google me, that is like number two. <laughs> it's like my Instagram and then my huddle highlight tape. I'm like, yeah. No, I, wonder I'm why. Doing, I wonder why. I wonder why. I'm doing something right. Yeah, I did pay somebody four hundred dollars to boost that to make sure that that's up there. But I mean, right. I, it is what it is. Um, so yeah, pin and pull. It's a blocking scheme. I was a tight end. You were a tackle. It fits. It's football. That's what this show is going to be about. We're going to have a whole bunch of different segments that we're going to come up with. Uh, that you know, you the fans are also going to be able to interact, ask us certain questions. We are uh, we're going to be doing this weekly. We're going to make the make the effort no matter where you're at in the season. I think, you know, if the Kelsey brothers are in the fucking NFL and they're yeah. doing one once a week, what's our excuse? For you know sure. I mean, do we not For have sure. an hour? It's, of course we yeah, have an hour. We always do. Um, so that being said, I do want to get into a little bit of football here. You started fall camp. Let the people know what what's been going on. You guys are on day five now of practice. Yeah. yeah, today was day five, I would say, right? Technically not really. It was our off day. But uh day five will be tomorrow. But the first four days were really good. Got really good, great work in. Um it's it's been hard. It's been hard as shit. I'll say that for sure. A lot different than San Jose, man. Just like the scheduling and just kind of I don't know the the strain that it takes to play in the SEC, and you know this is I knew this is what I got myself into when I signed up for this, but uh, now we're here and we're we're in we're in the shits, and it's awesome though. It's, it's been really good, and it's just good being with the boys. Like fall camp just brings everybody that much closer because you're all just in the shits, and you're like, all right, well, we're all gonna go through this together. Let's have some fun. Yeah, you gotta you gotta embrace it, and I think one of the things that you got to experience that day one was the a little bit of the humidity, and how how much that that plays a factor. Because I brag and I tell people I'm like, man, we used to practice in 115 degree heat, bro. Fucking, <laughs> and this is also a, a PSA too because I know the comments are gonna come in. I do have a potty mouth, so this is not a podcast <laughs> that you should watch. With your kids in the uh, car, maybe it's because it's respectful. It was the right time to use that. Uh, I I bragged. I was like 115 degree heat, and we're practicing out here in Vegas. I don't know who has it much tougher. Is it tougher? I think the humidity is worse. Like you just lose so much water and from your sweat. Like you start sweating the second you step outside, and it's just something about it, dude. That air is thicker, like. 
Trust me, I, I did up down. We did up downs in literally the second period, and I did not catch my breath until period eighteen. Like it just, there's something about the humidity that just grabs a hold of you and just doesn't let go. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I knew yeah. it was worse. Like I, I, I that's why I, I prefaced it. I was like, you know, I used to think I was tough, but yeah, it it does seem miserable. Um, and I mean, I always, I always poke fun at Pittman. He's a bigger Mm -hmm. guy, you know, and I got to respect what the humidity does for a person like that. He, he does have the balance though. So you guys aren't outside all the time. You guys were inside. We go for one of them, right? Yeah. So we go, well, one of the days we had to go inside, they, they held up. This is the first time I've ever seen it. They held up like a little thing to like the sky and they were like trying to get like the temperature and they're like, yeah, this shit's too hot for us to be out here. So, <laughs> but <laughs> funny story about that is, uh, so that was literally day two. Day one, three of the offensive linemen, I was one of them, died from the heat and had to get IVs. And so day two, uh, Coach Mateos comes in and he's like, let me tell you guys a story about Ray Baker. And we're all like sitting here like, who the hell is Ray Baker? <laughs> and Ray Baker is his son. And yeah. he was like, you got to be one with the son. And so that day we go out there, we group up, we all hold hands as an O-lineman circle up, and we pray to Ray Baker. And sure enough, <laughs> Ray Baker was baking so hard that he sent us inside. So ever since then, we've been praying to him. And he's honestly been pretty good to us. Like after that first day, he hasn't been baking as hard. I uh I love that. I I was already filled into the joke before it hit. And for some people, if that's the first time you're hearing Ray Baker, you're never not going to use it moving forward. <laughs> Praying for Ray Baker though is pretty smart. Uh, it Ray Baker and the football god, it are they one in the same? Or do they I think they live in the same neighborhood. Football 100%. god and Ray Baker. They are very familiar with each other, but uh they kind of are their own entity. So to say, mm. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't even know and what so, he means. So no, no, you used it in the proper context <laughs> there. Uh, so <laughs> I think that you know it's a, it's it's a good lesson for you guys early on too. But it's also it's like the first week of fall camp everywhere in the country, kids are falling out. Like like yeah. it, it's it's just difficult. But you uh, just you don't think it's gonna be you though. You know what I'm saying? And like they even showed. Like the first day, I've never seen anything like it. They never showed this to us at San Jose. They're like, if you like pass out from like key stroke, they have to shove something up your butt to like get your body temperature. Yeah, I know. I did not hear about this ever. And they're like, are showing like the thing that they put up there. And everybody's just like, okay. But I'm like, all right, this is not going to happen to me. And sure enough, after day one, I'm in period 14. And I'm like, dude. I might be getting it. And then <laughs> <laughs> period 15 comes. One of the freshmen goes out, like complete, had to step out of practice. And we don't see him until the end of practice. And so we're like, did he get it? Did he, did he get, get it? it? He did not get it. He did not oh. get it. <laughs> he may have said, he may have said, as it's ha- like, if he look. Nobody ever knows about this. Like, I'm going to tell them. I'm going to tell them it didn't happen. It could have happened. Yeah. We don't know. But, you know, Kobe, if you kept that secret strong, then all power to you, man. Right. So is it like a, is it like a popsicle they shove up your ass? Or like, because the way you made it seem is like to cool you down, they get like one of those like push pops and just. No, it almost looks like a. Uh, let me see. It's almost like a. <laughs> Does like he it have? almost looks like something like this, like that they would like, and obviously it's not like a plug in, right, but it's like, right. it's like a circle type thing that they just kind of, and they said they have to keep it in there until like the paramedics show up. So I'm not going to yeah. say that that's not scientifically proven to work. There's better ways. Like put me, throw, me in, throw me in an ice chest. Well, so that's what or they like, do first. That's what they do first. But if that doesn't work, if oh that doesn't God. work, then that's like. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, if you're dying, I mean, you may as well. I mean, golly. So, yeah. so, yeah, period 14 hits. You're thinking like, holy shit, like 
how can this day get any worse? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank God. I think we they might have moved it in after like period 15. So like we went inside, but even then it was just like the day was shocked. The day was yeah. shocked. It was yeah. So it sounds like you guys are acclimating how is everybody on the team like feeling about the confidence after week one? You know, are you guys like, all right, there's definitely work to do. Or are you guys like, all right, Hey, we're, we're putting in exactly what we need to do. You know, I think there's a, we're getting to that point where it's like, we're putting in what we need to, but it's like hard to really feel it out. Cause you're not done with all your installs. You know, you still have, I think for the offense, we still have like three more installs to go through. And so we're, we know our offense isn't in full form. So like, you know, that we know we're not fully, we're not fully there yet. Yeah. And it's, it's also at this part of camp that, you know, you bring up a great point. The defense is, I mean, just absolutely keyed into the, the four schemes that you guys are doing. And hundred percent. And it's like they're going to beat you to the gap every time. They know exactly what's going to happen because this is all we're doing. And there's not a lot of countering. So do you think that's going to come in like later on in fall camp? Like where everything's installed for the most part free for all. And that kind of gives you the best look. 100%. Like, I mean, those first those first three days, it was only wide zone and we're going and, you know, like. The defense knows what's going on. Like, like you said, yeah. they're they're meeting you to the gap, but you know we're starting to add in some new stuff and some new wrinkles, and so it's definitely making it easier on us or having to read and react a little bit more, and uh, running in different cadences to kind of slow them down and all that good jazz. So it's definitely like everything's starting to get put together. But yeah, once everything's in full form, it's it's a breeze with Petrino. Yeah. Yeah. Petrino's been looking cooler than ever. I cannot wait to purchase Hogs Plus. I mean, the way that him and Talon look on uh, on the Hogs Plus Instagram post, it just gives me remnants of like like John Gruden and doing his little quarterback <laughs> camp. Um, and so, yeah. Do you know how much Hogs Plus is? Because I'm definitely going to uh, buy it. I, I don't you know. know I, I, I have an account. I could have gave you one. You, you just haven't told me. I'm just going to support the school. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I'm willing to support the school. I think it's like 10 bucks, like a Netflix. I don't know. I I really don't know. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, I've been seeing it, and it's just like, it's amazing how you could put, we could do eventually one day, pin and pull plus. Plus what? Who cares? But it looks (laughs) so good. It looks good. Disney plus. Hog plus. It's perfect. You add a plus to a, a, you could sell a membership. It doesn't matter. Literally, like, and you don't even have to put the words. You literally just put the symbol right there, and it just fits everywhere. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right, they're onto something. <laughs> they're onto something with this plus thing. It makes me want to spend money. Um, Junior, before we get out of here, uh, any other final funny stories from fall camp uh, or or just anything that's happening in Arkansas? Any funny stories? Let's uh, let's think a little bit. Man, it's hard to think, like, when you're going meeting to meeting. I mean, there's a lot of funny stuff going on, trust me. Don't get me wrong. The NCAA games that are going on in the Players' Lounge, those are hilarious. Um, a lot of pool, pool like eight ball, billiards ball. Yeah. So, I mean, there's always stuff going on, you know, and it's it's hard to pinpoint <laughs> specific spots. But, uh, no, it's been it's been really good down here, man, and – you know, I think we're all really excited for the season. We're ready to just go out there and we're play some ball and just put on smiles to the Arkansas fans. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm stoked, dude. This uh, I didn't get a chance to go to the spring game. The first game, I mean, you you start off five road games in a sense, right? Like uh, where it's, no, no, we have one of them is at home. That's uh, USF, I want to say, or UAB, gotcha. UAB, and that's like game three. But yeah, no, we start at Little Rock, Oklahoma State, which is sold out. I don't know if you saw that. It's pretty. Oklahoma sick. State. Yeah, Oklahoma State's already sold out. Are you going to that one? Yeah, I mean, it's sold out. Allegedly, yeah. yeah I'm still yeah. getting into the game. Yeah, all right. Like, I'll, I'll figure <laughs> well, it out. I'm gonna get you tickets. I'm gonna get you tickets. 
I was about to ask, though, because for some of these games, though, dude, like Texas A&M, like how many tickets do you get? Because... Yeah, that's the right. I really don't know. Usually for home Because Texas A&M, get, that shit might yeah. sell out. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it usually does. But usually we get four for home games, two for away. Okay. Or sometimes three for away. It just depends on the school. I think with the yeah, bigger schools, they're going to give you a lot less. You could always and mix and mash with yeah. people, yeah. I mean, it's always amazing to me the, like... <sighs> The way that all that stuff operates in the background, it would be a nightmare for me to be in charge of ticketing for the entire football team. Literally yeah. a nightmare. I mean, I think I, I I know at San Jose it was, but I think that's kind of everywhere because kids forget to turn in their tickets because usually you have to like get them in by Wednesday. Right. And so the last thing you're thinking about is getting tickets in by Wednesday. You know what I'm saying? You're learning the, the new scheme for the week. You're trying to get schoolwork done. And then they're like, yeah. oh, shit, get your tickets in. And then you forget. And then that that Thursday, everybody's like, man, I don't. Come on. Come on. Give me an extra day. So it's usually a shit show. It always is a yeah. shit show. Yeah, you guys, uh, this, is, uh, this is a prime example. Um, with your NIL money now, you can hire a kid on Fiverr and just be like, <laughs> It's your job. I'm going to pay you $5 a week. It's your job to make sure my tickets are in by Wednesday. <laughs> that's that's a little bit extreme, but yeah, you could definitely do that. And you can definitely I mean, it's do just that. A, a yeah, it's a good use of your money. I mean, rather than you you feeling frustrated, you know? Right. You can outsource right. the work to a kid in, you know, another country possibly. Um anyways, uh there is absolutely nothing too funny happening in my life at the moment. Um, so with that being said, this is over. Uh, we will be back next week. Wait, wait, wait. we should wait. say happy, we should say happy birthday to pops. Oh, you know, that did be happen. Watching. Yeah. We have that to say did happy happen. birthday. Happy birthday. Did Dad. you see where he was? Did you see where he was sitting at the, the Reds game? No, I did not. You didn't see his story yesterday? No, I was watching a little bit, but I mean, there was a lot of stories. He was snapping Yeah, he a was lot. fired up. He was fired up, but I got him like I got him like twenty rows behind home plate. They had padded seats. This oh wow! Cool. Luxury, luxury, Jesus. and the Reds win. The Reds yeah. win. So now he can't leave Cincinnati <laughs> until the Reds lose again. At Mister George Carmona's, where you can find me, Junior. Where can they find you? you can find me at Carmona Jr. on Instagram and on Twitter. I don't really know how it does. Some one of them is two R's, one of them is two A's. If you find me, you Fig- find me, man. Figure it out, people. <laughs> Figure it out. All right, we're out. And now we go to the seventeenth tee where Carmona, seven under, is going for history here. He's never had a hole in one. He's always wanted a hole in one. Hits a six iron. and slight backspin to it, and it's in the cup. That is the Xbox clip of the week. Yeah! Here we go!